You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Thank you and welcome to episode number 952. Glad that you are with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for the reviews. Thank you for those who subscribe. That helps us tremendously when you do that. And so we appreciate it very much. We also appreciate when you become a member to truly support the show and the educational ecosystem that we have created. You may go to another class. You may learn something. But then what happens after the class? The silence is probably accurate. <laughs> um, that's why we have the Drone You community, and that's why we have a community of lifelong learners. Because success typically dictates an open mind and one that is open for lifelong learning. But if you want the advantage of learning things in person and then getting the backup online, check out droneu.education. All right, let's play today's show. Hey, Devin from Utah. I was wondering about... If I got a daylight waiver to fly at night while working for a certain media company and it was issued to me as the responsible person, but it has the company name on the waiver, and then I left that company and joined a new company, is that waiver still fine to fly under my new company or is it owned by the original company? It's under my name. I'm the responsible person for it, but uh, I've left that company and I'm flying for a new company. I just wanted to make sure that that waiver is still okay for me to keep using. Let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Devin. That's actually a really good question. And uh, I would imagine there's a lot of folks, at least over time, that are going to be in that boat. And uh, it sounds like there might be a couple of issues with this particular situation. I have a question. Um, Do you know on the Part 107 test, it says ultimately who is responsible for your flight? The uh, responsible person. The remote pilot in command. The remote pilot in command. Now, when the responsible person is no longer working at that company, do you think he could still be responsible for that waiver? I would think that it implies the answer is absolutely. The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think... And, you know, today's short show will really be uh, kind of semantics. But if you're working at a company and you're filing a waiver, file a waiver for yourself. Because if the company goes, then you the waiver goes with you. All that hard work continues on. Um, and it's – is it not very expensive, right, to file a waiver? Is it, is it free? Free. So, so no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also I would reach out to the FAA waiver office and let them know that you're no longer working at that company because I also wouldn't trust the company to take my name off the waiver because if they knew that that would negate the waiver, then they may freak out and not do it, whereas it could just be as simple as changing the name. So the process in which to correct this, uh, I'm not very sure of, to be to be 100% honest with you. I don't know if it's just reaching out to the waiver office and saying you're no longer with the company, you're the responsible person, you don't want to be the responsible person because you're not there to oversee flight, you're not there to make emergency changes or management or avert an issue. Yeah, I would probably send an email so that you have a record of the date and time that you sent it. True. Just in case something happens. Do you play a lawyer on TV? Uh... Or on no. radio? <laughs> <laughs> on a podcast. Dang, that's a, that's a, that's a good job. Honestly, uh, I talked to Vic about this, and I'm pretty sure uh, you are still responsible. You can ask the company to call the FAA to take care of it. We know that sometimes the FAA can be difficult to work with and that, that there are many potential problems that could come about. Maybe someone doesn't respond to an email and you're still responsible. I don't know. I wouldn't play games with liability. I would call the FAA myself and go to the waiver office and correct the waiver. Maybe they'll change the business name for you. Maybe you can be working for someone else. It could be that simple. I honestly don't know the protocol for this. Um, I think it's one of those things that's not really typically clear, but I do understand that the FAA very explicitly says the ultimate person who's responsible is a remote pilot in command. And if your legal name is on a legal federal document that says you're the responsible pilot in command as a son of a lawyer, I would not risk it at all. 
I would email the FAA instantly. Because my hunch is that you were the pilot for the media company that you mentioned working for, and they probably aren't real connected to how that all works, right? So it, most likely they would just use it. They bring someone else in. They wouldn't think about that stuff. True. That would be my guess. And then, True. And then you're exposed. You're exposed and it's to really liability you could never think of. And it's an exposure that could ruin your career. Is it worth it? Probably not. That's why you should take this movie advice or movie sound advice and take your name off that document. Because it's not going to sound super sexy when they crash and you're liable. I wouldn't want to be in that movie. Me neither. I was just trying to use the movie tone voice, and I totally messed up the line about it. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was almost cool. It, it, it was. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs>